Hello and welcome to my talk on Rainbow in the Quirky Simple. This is a uh, joint work with uh, Tung Chu and Yuling Yang. And let me start by introducing Rainbow. Rainbow is a NIST PTC signature finalist and it's based on multivariate quadratic equations. And it's one of the three finalists in the NIST PTC competition and the other finalists are Falcom and Golithium. And those are both based on structured lattices. So Rainbow is the only one left that's based on MQ. And as such, it, it comes with quite different performance characteristics and also the operations in there are quite different from, from the lattice-based scheme. So it, it's very interesting to, to look into um, how these schemes perform, how Rainbow performs compared to the other finalists. And there's also three alternative schemes. One is called uh, GEMS, which is also an MQ scheme, but there has been a recent attack on GEMS, so, so maybe GEMS is no longer that interesting because it's now basically broken. And there's Sphinx Plus, which is a hash-based signature scheme, and there's Picnic, which is a, a based on zero-knowledge proofs. So what Rainbow and basically all MQ schemes are famous for is that they have big public keys and very small signatures. So due to the big public keys, we have we've thought for a long time that that makes them very unsuitable for microcontrollers. So for example, if you look into the table of the parameters, it's a Rainbow here on the slide. You see that even the lower security level has public keys of 162 kilobytes which might be, be too large for for many microcontrollers. nonetheless we have looked into implementing rainbow on the cortex m4 and our paper is, is available on different and our code is, is completely open source and available on github so please have a look and and try it out so let's dive a little bit more into rainbow and rainbow comes in, in three variants uh, the first one is called classic so that's the standard rainbow scheme the second is called CZ, and previously it was called Cyclic. Um, the idea here is that we do we sample part of the public key from, from a seed, um, which makes the public key quite a bit smaller, but also leads to much slower verification, because in verification you first have to sample this part of the public key, which is, is quite expensive. The third variant is compressed, which is basically CZ, plus we sample the entire secret key from a seed, which leads to a tiny uh, secret key, basically just a seed, but also much slower signing because we first have to sample the, the entire secret key. So if we look into the parameter sets here, we see that at each security level, we have each of these variants. We see, for example, for the first security level that the CZ has 60 kilobytes of public key compared to the 162 kilobytes for the classic. So it has um, quite significantly the smaller public key, but we um, we can see in the paper that the cost of this is quite huge for, for verification. So it, it depends really on on um, what you're optimizing for. So let's talk a little bit about um, the, the platform we are we're using. And you will see that most PTC papers use the same board, and that's the the STM32 F407 discovery board. Um, so basically all, all the, the other papers in this session, you will see that they are using this board. And this is also the one used by the, the PTC framework PTM4. And this board comes with a megabyte of flash and 128 kilobytes of RAM. And there you immediately see a problem for us. And that is that the 128 kilobytes of RAM is not even enough to fit the public key of Rainbow Classic. Um, to solve this, there's multiple alternatives. I'll talk a little bit about that later. We went for the for the easy solution here and just bought a board with, with more RAM. So we are instead using the, the EFM32 GG11B, which um, the series is also called the Giant Gecko. And this comes with two megabytes of flash, but more importantly, with 512 kilobytes of RAM. So, so this allows us to actually put the keys of Rainbow in there and then that's a lot easier. What's maybe also interesting for some is that it comes with a crypto accelerator, which supports SHA-2, AS, and also some um, ECC operations. So um, this might be useful for some PTC schemes. Also for Rainbow, it's very useful because you can because it's using SHA-2 and AS. However, uh, in this talk, I, I will not um, talk about uh, the results when using this crypto accelerator to keep the results a little bit more comparable to other boards. Um, but in the paper, we also reported the results <coughs> when using this accelerator. 
What's also important to mention here is that this core produces quite comparable site counts to the STM32. Um, so when measuring TQM4, we saw like less than a percent difference. So that's that's quite comparable. If you don't want to use this this EFM board, there's also an STM32 nuclear board, which has quite a bit more RAM than the, the other one. So it comes with two megabytes of flash as well, but and 640 kilobytes of RAM. So this is also something you could use um, for implementing Rainbow. And this, this board is now also supported by PQM4. So um, yeah, if someone wants to try it out, that's a, that's a nice board as well. Um, however, we see that um, even with 512 kilobytes of RAM or 640 kilobytes of RAM, still only Rainbow 1 is feasible. Rainbow 3 and Rainbow 5 are a little bit out of reach with this, with this amount of RAM. So we in this talk and also the paper, we focus on Rainbow 1. Okay, so let's dive a little bit more into the details of Rainbow. And um, I'll briefly describe it here. So we first need to pick um, parameters n and m, where n is the number of variables and m is the number of equations. And for, for MQ signatures, it's also always that n is larger than m. For example, Rainbow 1 is using n equals 100 and m equals 64. So 100 variables in the equations and in total 64 equations. Then we'll have to pick a finite field. In this case, this is F16 for Rainbow 1 and F256 for Rainbow 3 and Rainbow 5. So for, for this talk, only the, the F16 is relevant. And we can do um, each generation of Rainbow. We first need to sample two um, linear invertible transformations, T and S. Where T is mapping M elements to M elements, and S is mapping N elements to N elements. Then we need to sample a invertible quadratic central map Q, mapping N elements to N elements. And then we can, from these uh, three transformations, we can compute the public Q P as a composition of T, Q, and S. So the resulting um, will be the resulting map will be from m elements to n elements, and the private key basically consists of the individual mappings t, q, and s. Signing then works as follows. So we first compute the digest of the of the message, call that w here, and that consists of m um, field elements, uh, and then we we map this this w using the inverse of t, the inverse of q, and the inverse of s to a signature set, which consists of n elements. This can then be used in verification by, we first again compute the digest of the message, and then apply the public map to the signature set and get some um, w prime. And we check if this w prime is equal to the digest of the message w. And if that's the case, then the signature is valid. So what's most interesting here is, is the central map. Um, so how we um, how how it's implemented in Rainbow. This is defined as two layers of, of UV basically. So we have two sets of equations, where the first set of equations consists of thirty-two equations, and the second one also consists of thirty-two. And you see that um, here in the equations, in the first one. Um, only the first um, v1 plus o1 variables are used, whereas in the second one, all of the variables are used. So the way we solve this in practice is the following. So remember, we are giving x and we are trying to find y. So what we will be doing is uh, we'll pick the first v1 variables at random. So this makes the first set of equations a linear linear system of equations. And then we can solve this in the set of equations for the remaining variables, um, the re remaining O1 variables. Then we can plug all this into the second set of equations, which is then again a linear set of equations, and we can solve that to obtain the remaining variables. Um, so we see this is, um, in rainbow, this is two layers. One could, in theory, also construct this with more than two layers. Uh, but with in the, the NIST submission, this is not done. Um, yeah. Okay, so this gives us roughly a, a list of what 
things we need to implement so to get a, a fast implementation of Rainbow. The first one is this field multiplication, which is used everywhere. Let's use in keychain and signing and verification. And in some places, this needs to be in constant time. So mostly in signing, it needs to be constant time. But in other places, mostly in verification, it can be non-constant time because it's only operating in public data. Then we need efficient linear equation solving, which is used in signing for enriching the central map. We can either implement this using matrix inversion followed by multiplication, or we can directly solve the equations. Here it's important that um, this is constant time um, because this is this secret secret data depending on the secret key. Then the third one is we need to evaluate the public map T. And that's basically the only operation verification besides hashing. So if you optimize, if you speed up the evaluation of the public map, you directly speed up verification. And here, since it's verification, the runtime here may depend on the signature or the public key in most use cases. Let's start with the final field multiplication. So here's a quick overview. So in Rainbow, the, the um, F16 is defined as a tower field. Uh, so we represent a F16 element with two elements in F4, which then is again represented by two elements in F2. So in the end, each um, F16 element is represented by four bits. Um, and as almost always in Rainbow, what we're doing is we multiply a large vector by um, a scalar. And the easiest way to do this is using lookup tables. And if we, we have basically two choices here, we can either do one multiplication for lookup, um, which will take us at least one cycle for the index computation, then at least one cycle for the, the fetch, and then another cycle for packing it back. So this will take at least three cycles for multiplication. Or we could do a little bit larger lookup tables, table and do two multiplications in parallel. Then this is basically halved and we need one and a half cycles um, for multiplication. But um, what's important here is the Cortex M4 cores may have a cache. So uh, the lookup approach should really only be used in public data. So most of the time when it needs to be constant time, what we will instead be doing is we bit slice the entire operation. So we, we bit slice the the um, F16 elements into four registers. And then as we'll see on the next slides is that this will then take 32 cycles for 32 multiplication, excluding the bit slicing, but then if we ignore the bit slicing, then we will need one cycle for multiplication. A little bit more of the details So what um, we will be doing is we're given an element A and B and we want to find the product we can now represent the elements um, using their bits. We, the bits are now here called EI. And then given the bits of A and the bits of B, we can express the multiplication as, as logical bitwise operations and um, express the product in this way. So then we see that here the, the dots are logical ands and the pluses are uh, XORs. And if we have the, the elements bit sliced into, into registers, we can directly implement these ands and xors, and that will give us a multiplication. So to understand how we can implement this on the ARM, I need to introduce one feature um, that's, that's very useful, and that's conditional execution. So, so ARM allows you to execute a block of up to four instructions conditionally on a flag. So if a flag is set, then the, the um, instruction is executed and otherwise it's not. But what's important here is that even if the condition is not satisfied, um, even though the instruction has no effect, so it doesn't actually write anything back to the registers, it will still take one cycle. And that means if these are like just logical operations um, and not branch instructions, then, then this will be constant time. So we, we can actually use this for secret data. Um, so that we use the it instruction, the if then instruction, and this will be used to also encode which of our instructions are in the if branch and which are in the else branch. And let me give you one example here. So we can compare our zero to 17. 
and then we can have a if then else equal and in the then branch we we do an add r2 and if the in the in the not equal branch we do an add r3 so depending on if r1 was equal to 17 we will be either adding r2 or r3 you can also do this with more instructions and then the, the it will then encode um, how, which instructions are in which branch and so in this case all of the instructions are in the then branch and in this case we do a test on r0 which is basically checking if the second bit of r0 is is set and if that's the case so it's not equal to zero then all of these four instructions will have an effect and otherwise they will not have any effect okay so if we now can uh, use the we can now use these instructions to implement final field multiplication in this case with, with accumulation because that's what we mostly need mostly need so let's assume we have 32 elements it's sliced into four registers and you have one element b that you want to multiply the, the vector by and that's in the in the least significant middle of b and we also input an accumulator um, where we want to add the products so, so what the function will be doing is it multiplies all of the elements a i by the element b and adds them to c i you can see here and we can implement this using four blocks four conditional execution blocks that then conditional on the bits of b add to the accumulator or to um, some temporary registers and we see that this is uh, 32 instructions which gives us the 32 cycle multiplication so that's the final field arithmetic and now i'm moving on to verification so what this is doing is basically applying the public map, map to set and then checking if this is equal to the digest of the message the way that this works is um, we will have um, this formula where we plug in the, the elements of the signature set i and multiply them by this matrix a i and in total we will have m of these uh, matrices and we see that um, this matrix has, has half zeros and then um, what we actually get in the in the public key is um, m of these matrices and, and the matrix is always one row of um, the public key and the way it's stored is actually that uh, in a column major form so we will first get the first element of all the, the m matrices and the second of all m matrices and um, yeah we can easily see how, how this this will then be implemented usually so we would implement we will multiply z0 by z0 and multiply the product by the the first column of the public key and add this to an accumulator then we move on multiply z0 by z1 multiply it by the second column of, of the public key and add it into an accumulator uh, so that's a standard way to do this um, so that's the approach that i just described so you multiply set i by set j multiply the result result by one column of the public key and accumulate the result in, in w however we use a different approach here so instead of multiplying each column by set i z j and then accumulating in, in w we instead have 15 accumulators so for each possible value of z i z j except for zero because multiplying by zero will be zero anyway so you can throw that away immediately and then depending on the product set i z j we add the column in the corresponding into the uh, corresponding accumulator and then in the very end we do the multiplications um, then we have some other tricks we're using here one is the um, with the f16 multiplication we can now use lookup tables because this is actually faster for for scalar than scalar multiplication and another trick that we use is if i reset i or set j is zero we can skip the in, in corresponding columns which gives us quite a bit of speed up so looking into results you see that this is much faster than the previous state of the art I also need to mention here that pre the previous implementation was actually a round two rainbow implementation which had a smaller parameter set and that this previous implementation was using lookup tables throughout so this is not secure in case you have um, a cache 
we see in, in the plot here already that we outperform this implementation by, by 2x for signing and even more significantly by 7x for, for verification. We can also compare the results to, to other finalists and there we see that Rango is by far the fastest NIST PPC signature finalist on the quick exam for and signing is four times faster than the lithium and 45 times faster than Falcon and verification of Rainbow is five times faster than the lithium and two times faster than Falcon. Then we've done some more tricks um, to make it a little bit faster. One is uh, the pre-computation of the bit slicing and um, the other one is we tried out an alternative field representation to see what this would, would change because it, it allows a little bit faster bit slicing verification. So let me give a little bit of detail here. So for the pre-computation, so we know that the secret key is, is input to multiplications and, and signing. So we at some point need to bit slice this. So option one, and that's what we did in the results that I just presented, is we bit slice this as a part of signing. And option two is we bit slice this ahead of time. So for example, we could just keep it bit sliced in TGen. And then of course, option two now conflicts a little bit with the compatibility of this uh, secret key with non-bit slice implementations, but probably in most cases it's fine if the, the secret key is, is not portable. And we'll see that this saves up to 20% in signing time. Note that a similar approach could be used for um, the public key in verification, but um, there is only a couple of multiplications in verification, and so this is very negligible and um, of course, for the public key, the compatibility issues are a much larger, larger concern, so we don't do this for, for verification. Um, yeah, then the other thing we did is try the different F16 representation. So the spec actually prescribes you to, forces you to, to use the power field representation um, because that's faster on some platforms because you can use uh, Kretsuba and then uh, multiply the F4 elements. But one could also think of using the direct, re direct representation throughout the power field. And we see that this actually results in faster bit slicing and replication, which is about five times faster than, um, than um, the, the power field representation. However, one important note here is that this is actually incompatible with the rainbow spec. So um, since the conversion would be way too expensive. You will have to change the spec to actually sample everything in, in the different representation. And so this is incompatible. You would have to change the spec. So let's look into the results. Um, we see that there is both of these things don't really change the verification time. Um, we see that signing comes about 20% faster when using pre-computation and signing becomes about around 5% faster if we use the direct F16 representation. So let me conclude this talk. So we showed in this, this work that Rainbow can actually run on a small microcontroller, like a Cortex-M4. In our experiment, we used a, a giant gecko with 512 kilobytes of RAM. One could also use a STM nuclear with 640 kilobytes of RAM and um, our implementation is now actually merged into, into PQM4 and can be reused with, with the nuclear board. Rainbow is by far the fastest in PPC signature finalist on the Cortex M4. And um, let me also discuss some different approaches that we can use if we don't want to buy more RAM. So one alternative approach would be to stream in the public key. And this was done in a recent work by Gonzalez et al, um, where they verified they implemented verification of post quantum signatures in, in less than eight kilobytes of RAM. And this work actually includes Rainbow, so that would be another path that you, you could go. Then a, yet another approach would be to uh, store the keys in flash memory. Um, so that's also this approach is used in a recent paper by Dei Chen and Chu, which is also presented in a chess in this session. And they implement the less make a least. And a similar approach could also be used for Rainbow to, to store the keys in Flash, to write the keys to Flash in Keygen and then use it from there. Yeah, and that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.